Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Mariano Cicciarelli. Welcome to the seventh video of my Making a Taking a Try series. Today we are going to be looking at the importance of recording your own samples. So, um, so far on the previous six videos, uh, we were looking at specific channels and the automation uh, on them and some of the EQ and some of the reasons why I chose those particular elements to, to be sitting at, at those places at those moments of the track. Um, now, when when trying to decide which would be the next which which would be the next channel. Um, to take a look at on this video, I realized that these four channels have something in common. What they've got in common is that there's no, there's not much sound processing going on. There's not much tweaking of the actual sounds. There's no beat matching of them. There's no. Um, very little cueing, just cutting the low frequencies in most cases, and if there's any effects at all, is um, just a little bit of reverb, of reverb um, to make them sit better on the track. So, and yet, um, these are, in my opinion, um, some of the most important sounds in the track. The reason being is that. As they are my own recordings, and um, we can we can argue that they they may be not not of the best of the best quality. Um, maybe I haven't used the best equipment to record them, um, but they are unique, and they sound unique. And more than likely, even if you try to record them at home, you won't be able to do it. So. By doing this, what I'm doing essentially is adding something to my music, to my track, that no one else would be able to replicate, which is awesome. This this means this is this is 100% my sound, my way of doing things, my textures and my my dynamics, and in in all these cases, my own hands. So. This is why I decided to group them all together on this video, and um, and talk about the importance of recording your own sam uh, your own samples. Even uh, and I'm gonna encourage you to do it, even if you don't have your the the best equipment, even if you can spend uh, very little money in in a microphone. Uh, I would say go ahead and do it because it's worth it. It's worth it, and you can you can always tweak the sounds. You can always do a bit of EQing. You can always um if if you for example some microphones um uh some microphones don't record uh much of the sound. You you don't get very very much signal from them. Or, or they record very quietly. Or someone some microphones um record very loudly and uh, they clip so you can you can always play around with those things but it, it doesn't really matter what what matters is find a way even if it's with your own phone find a way and start recording your samples if you're not doing this then you're missing out on 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 the most um on, on the biggest on the biggest source of of sounds that you can imagine i can you can you can make sounds with anything and everything around you, I've used I've used glasses um, like this one. Exactly one of these glasses, I've used it um, as a as a hi hat on one of my sound of one of my tracks. I've used my mouth for most of for most of the sounds on several tracks. I've used um, heating guitar chords. I've used um, cymbals. For one of the kicks on another track, I've used a, a MacBook Pro, a, one of those MacBook Pros um, cardboard uh, boxes. I've used one of those, uh, so I put a hole into it and the microphone inside and tap the box in different places um, to make a sound. So I, then I got several kick sounds or tom sounds, depending on how you want to use them. Um, what else? I've used, I've used something like this, for example. This is something, this is a... Um, um, this is um, 
a part of a table. It was a, like the leg of a table, and um, I I dismantled the table and decided to use that as a, a drum or something like that. You can use anything, and um, and and the list goes on and on and on. So, again, and before taking a quick look, um, and hope hopefully this video will be short as well, um, before taking a quick look at, at all the, at those at these four channels. Um, I must say again, and I'll probably say it again. <clears throat> please start recording your samples. <laughs> that would make that would make your music not only more interesting but also unique. And on top of that, it will make it super fun as well for you because you're just not choosing from a massive library of sounds to see which one you like. Just go ahead and make it. Go ahead and make it yourself. And it'll be much more fun. You have, you have loads, tons of fun. You have tons of samples in no way. And then um, in the future, I'm gonna, I'm gonna record another video on how to actually play around with samples to, to make sounds from different things. Maybe, maybe a sound like that sounds dull. But if you, for, but combined with other samples, or maybe in different ways that you can process the samples, you can, you can get. Um, a ton, a, a ton of um, possibilities out of it. So, um, going into these different samples, I just wanted to show you how the track sounds without these four. Now, please bear in mind that there isn't a time when all four of them are sounding at the same time. So we've got three at the same time here, three at the same time here um three at the same time here and then two here we don't have all four of them at the same time which which again isn't isn't purpose because i'm trying to gen I, i'm using each one of them for different things now let's go to this to this bit which is the one of the busiest and um let's just hear how it sounds and um and then we'll have a, a bit of a listen to this part as well Sounds okay. Sounds empty. Yeah. Um. To me, the sound at that point, um, in a way, the the sorry, the song in that in that point sounds um empty, although tidy. And one particular feeling that I got especially at the end is that it felt slow it felt really draggy so let me go ahead and add all these elements and let's hear how it sounds now So it's definitely not empty anymore, and um, and continues to be tidy because every element is on is on its own place, and you can actually distinguish how everyone is occupying a certain space on your on your head, if you especially if you're using headphones. Um, and now it definitely lost that feeling of being slow. So these elements are adding adding texture, uh, adding body, and uh, adding spatial, I don't know how to explain it, but spatial, it's not awareness, it's basically a, a spatial texture, because you can feel more sounds coming from more different directions, and um, they also add drive to the track, add drive, that sense of speed that comes Particularly from the from this uh, um, which one from the this one that one and then the finger symbols they give a bit of drive uh, not drive but groove yep okay so let's um dig 
a little bit deeper into each element not for not for long though because again as i was saying before they don't have much sound processing on them even though it might seem like it because they, there are several elements but on this one for example this is the um sorry this one and i think this one is the more um slightly more com com complex um this one what i did was pretty straightforward and simple i turned on the guitar i plugged in my guitar rig found a nice um a nice uh plugin with delay and uh, and tweaked it to the to the parameters that i liked um and then just started touching the chords and banging the the, the guitar just just making sounds because my intention at the moment as the as the channel says it was to create ambience i don't care at this point and with this channel i don't care about rhythmics i don't care about notes i don't care about driving the track i don't care about anything else the only thing i care about is creating some ambience creating a feeling that there's someone actually playing this track so what you hear like pumping that's the compressor that i'm using i'm also cutting the low frequencies so that i'm giving space to all the to the bass and the kick drum and these are all different different sounds that i accomplish just by moving my fingers through the through the guitar chords strings sorry hitting them with a with a pick with my fingers and nothing else so that's just a bit of um, ambience and when you hear the, the entire track you can barely hear this however when it picks you can there you go again this is very 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 subtle subtle and is almost like in the background but it's adding texture it's adding something different and it's adding something that the mind doesn't register register because it doesn't belong to any of the of, of the other elements it doesn't really sound like any of the of the other elements however it's is there and it's almost imperce imperceptible so again really interesting um thing to play around with uh, let's go to the right splash. This one actually has almost almost no sound processing. The only thing I'm using is the EQ to shut down the low frequencies, the compressor just to to make sure that I'm giving that the kick some space, and um, and that's pretty much it. I'm not even using in on this case. I managed to get some really nice reverb from from this room. So I'm not even using reverb. I'm just going straight as I recorded from the from this microphone into into the track. Pretty simple, and it fits perfectly. It adds, I like it because it adds some air on the top, on, on the highs, it adds some air to the to the high end of the track and also um, it, it generates that drive, it's that that um, particular rhythm that I'm playing on the cymbal, it, it just pushes the track forward. So now to the finger cymbals, these are, these are literally finger cymbals, th those ones that you put on your fingers and you clap them like that. So I figured out a way of making them, of opening them and closing them in a way that they will create different sounds every time. Um, so once I had the, the entire rhythm of the track, I, um, I started playing around with it, which is also part of the fun. And uh, once I found something that I, that I thought was really interesting, I went, went ahead and, and recorded it. Um, again, this has, even though there's a guitar rig there, I can turn it off because it's, um, I'm actually not using it. Um, it, it's got a, a, sl a slight cut on the on the low end, no compression here, and I'm using um, Lexicon uh, Vintage Plate with 
20 almost 20 percent of mix and you can see the settings here so the reverb in this case uh, that I'm adding here is just to give um, um, give that extra space um, sensation to the, to the sample mainly because these these symbols are so small that I have to record the, record them next to the next to the microphone and because I'm banging them it was making the microphone peak and for that reason I had to turn the volume of the microphone down which means it wasn't capturing the, the reverberation of the of the room um, so just banging the the uh, the symbols next to the microphone and then I can go ahead and add some reverb using using the lexicon um, so let me just show you how they sound without the the lexicon see very very dry I had to record them very close to to the microphone and then adding it yeah in this case I'm using sort of like a, a medium room that reflects quite a lot almost like I was in um, uh, it, it feels to me like as if I was in um in a school gym or something like that anyway uh, I, what I'm also doing that I think uh, I'm not doing with the ride but I'm doing with uh, with the finger symbols is to place them on the left yeah I'm placing them right here on my left on my left on my left ear so they occupy this space here not this not this because I'm giving space to the right that's gonna start now right here and this guitar because it's got um, it's got delay and it's got on both sides it's pumping sound is pumping sound to both ends um, and that's why it's it's sitting at the middle so the last one um, is this element this element was actually really interesting to create because I I've, I've got one of those um, singing bowls let me show you actually I've got something called singing bowl um, which you can um, you can play with a, with a, you can play with this so it, it just makes a sound I need to have the pillow that comes with it to be able to make it but basically it makes this very interesting sound now um, because of the of the tone that it's got it doesn't really fit on the track so what I did was to grab one of these little finger symbols and drop it in the middle and then start to playing around with it because now if instead of heating it and it's just sound, letting that long sound um, sound um, I hit it with a symbol inside it will make the symbol vibrate and uh, make a sound with the singing bowl and then I can just open and close my hand and I can make it vibrate or stop yeah so um, again as I was saying you, you don't have to have um, expensive instruments to have fun and to record really interesting samples I just made something out of two things that I had lay, laying, laying around on, on my on my studio and you can do the same with anything pretty much anything at your house um, so again uh, what I think this sample adds is um, is that extra drive that, uh, that the track needs um, on the main part so I'm, I'm presenting it um, for um, actually I'm presenting it on the right on the right hand side I'm adding again because this was a very this is a very short sound but I'm banging on something and I had to record it close to the close to the microphone uh, didn't capture the re the reverb on the on the room so I had to add it myself again I used a very very similar uh, lexicon uh, plugin cutting the the low frequencies and then nothing else um, because the sample is interesting on its own so I'm presenting it 
on this section which is the the break this when it starts and then it stops on the on the main when the when the main comes back it stops just to make it feel draggy again at this at this part i think i explained it on, on one of my previous videos but at this moment I, I i want the track to feel uncomfortable because usually when someone when, when a track comes from the main you expect it to be to be powerful and to be and to be driving again to that main and to that happiness moment if you if you will but i don't want that i want you to feel uncomfortable in this section for 30 seconds and then to come back up and start building up again to that main main part so here i'm gonna drop as you can see most of the elements i'm, I'm just gonna drop them build up with automation and then start building back up again and the main drive is going to come from this element together with the lead guitar and you can see how they complement each other so well right i think um i think i've been through through pretty much everything we needed to know oh the most important uh, point that i want to get through to you with this video is get your shit together and start recording your own samples if you're not doing that you are missing out i mean i've got tons of samples I, as well i bought the the vengeance packs which i i'm leaving you the the download um, link on the description below um but still I keep making my music mostly, not entirely, but mostly with my own samples. And I think that's very important as well to acknowledge that um, you probably won't be able to do everything with your with the resources, depending on what resources you've got. So, for example, in my case, um, I really struggle to make kick samples with the things I've got laying around because the kick samples need to be strong and needs to be, need to be powerful. So I usually use um, some samples from the from the packs that I bought. Um, but all the other ones, you can you can just make make shit up. You can make stuff up as, as you go along. Um, whenever I'm, I'm making a new track, I'm just I'm just making sounds, and if I feel something is right and that works with the track, straight away I record it. Uh, I usually have my microphone right in front of me, so I can I can play around with anything that I like, go straight into the track, and then then you can play around with the sound processing and, and create really interesting things. Um, right, the track that we were working on today, in, as on, on the entire series, is my track Moment that you can um, download for free using the link that you can find in the description below. Um, that's pretty much everything for me today. I just want to say thank you so much again for joining me. Um, it's, it's been great to go through through this track all together, and uh, we've got just a few more channels to go through, and then we'll move on to a uh, to a new uh, making a training track series. Cody, what I'm going to do in the next one is to is to give you this, the sample pack, is to give you all the samples that I'm using, and to work with you so that all of us we can create a different a different track and, uh, and at the end of it I can review the tracks that you've made as well um, so that's that's it for me thank you again so much for joining me into watching um, as far as, as, as you're watching right now um, if you do if you did like the track the, the track or, or the or the video please give it a like give it a share um, give it a subscribe and, uh, and shout about it it will be much 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 appreciated so thank you so much I'm Maria Chicharelli see you next time